If you're involved in MMA, boxing, kickboxing, even Muay Thai, you're gonna see people working on head movement. Everybody wants to be able to evade shots without having to stand in the pocket and block them. Today I'm gonna to teach you how you can at home train with just one of your wrist wraps and start improving your head movement by so much. So I would be lying if I said that I did not want better head movement. When I do boxing rounds and I drop my hands down here, sure, movement with the head is so much easier. But as soon as I don't go to the kickboxing style and I put my hands up, it becomes that much more difficult. Mostly because the head becomes much wider, but also because I just don't train slipping with kicking in mind. But what we're gonna focus on today is how you can take your wrist wrap place it between two items in your home, if you just wanna do some home training, and how you can start working on slipping shots and getting your counters back at the same time. Because it's so much different going through the motions when there's not an actual object there. You think you're doing things enough, and then maybe you think, okay, I'm doing it too much. There's just so much that can happen when you don't have an actual object there to help you. And when we have partners, super easy partner can just throw punches at you and you can get the perfect movement down. But without a partner and being at home, grabbing one of these and setting up your own little apparatus to improve your slipping is just gonna help you so much. So the first thing that I want to talk about with this and getting your slipping on point is how far should you be ducking from side to side? Many people, if a punch comes out their head, they get way down here. We see a lot of boxers do that and they get this massive movement happening, but truth is the more you move away from the punch, the more danger you put yourself in either for a kick to come up or for your counter to be impeded in terms of speed. Because if I get way down here, if I want to punch him, I have to get way back up and that takes time. But if I can drop and come back really quick, I'm that much more dangerous. So the first thing that we want to recognize is what height should this be at? What is ideal? Well, I was told by Tony Pep, he's a boxer, the only boxer in the world actually who fought both Floyd Mayweather and Ricky Hatton. He told me that you want this lower than most people put it. He said he teaches his students, don't go way up here. You might think it's beneficial, but he said you're better off getting used to slipping a little bit more. So I like to go right about the level of my trap slightly above shoulder height. From here, when I go for my slip, I have to get a little bit lower. I want my hair to brush against the wrap, and then I come back up to the other side. I wanna make sure, especially if I'm not utilizing footwork, that I don't end up over here because of the rope. I don't go and then pause over here because I'm out of position. I just stay like this. I let the wrist wrap sort of touch against my neck, and I do my little slip and then I return right to where I started. Now you're going to find that you're gonna get a bit of a workout in this, either in your lower back or in the glutes because both of them are engaging. If I just do my legs, it looks like this. And if I just do my back, it looks like this. We don't want those on their own, we want the two of them together. A Little bit of legs, a little bit of lower back. You can set up this and just for a warm up, just go maybe 100 side to side. Notice my hands are still up. I don't wanna come up here and have a second shot clip me in the cheek. So I keep my hands up and I just work, staying super tight and I just maybe do 100 to just get warmed up. The further I get through my 100, maybe the faster I'll start going. And I just get that little bob and weave down and I start picking it up faster and faster. By the time you get to the end of 100, you're gonna have that motion down very comfortably and now you're ready to start advancing. In terms of advancing this, we have two ways that I want you to focus on. We're not gonna make this an advanced episode today. We'll make it sort of beginner intermediate. Two stages. Stage number one that we're gonna add right now is a counter punch. Stage number two, we'll be adding footwork. And then at the end, I'll do a little bonus section where we incorporate footwork and the counter punch, and that's when we start getting quite advanced. But for the moment, in terms of counters, let's go for uppercuts. If I'm slipping to my left, 
I load my left shoulder and I throw the uppercut. I actually like to come right to the rope because it's a target for me. I can really get my eyes locked on, make sure I'm hitting it. And that's right where the guy's jaw is gonna be anyway. I don't really understand the point in slipping and coming up the side and missing. So I'll slip, touch, slip, touch, slip, touch. And I'm just getting that fluid motion down. Remember glutes engaging, lower back engaging slightly, rotate, and then right from there to the other side, rotate, rotate, getting that perfect motion down. You can work some longer uppercuts and maybe the guy threw a really long hook and he's way back here. Long uppercuts, or maybe he gets in tight and you go short. Play with your distance. And again, no rushing. You want to feel your hair skimming against that to make sure you're not going too low. If you don't feel contact with your hair, that means you're doing too much of a slip. Keep it minimal and then add those little uppercuts at different ranges. Now, yes, absolutely, you could add other shots. I could come around with straights or come around with hooks. Either one is fine, but the uppercut seems to be one that the boxers use very often. And I would suggest going with that as you're getting your comfort level down. Now, once you've done this, we need to start adding the footwork. The footwork is fairly basic. All we're doing on our footwork is just left, right, left, right, left, right, hands are up, and I back up. And every time I take a little step, I'm gonna add a slip. Step, step, two steps for one slip, and then do the same thing going backwards. Again, if I started with 100 warm-ups, and then I went maybe about a hundred of these, taking little pauses in between, working on different ranges and speed. On this again, I'd probably do a hundred. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch directions, just getting really comfortable with it, checking to make sure your hands are in position. One of the biggest mistakes that people are gonna make once they start incorporating footwork and the slipping, they're gonna make a little error with their feet. Their feet, very often when I see people do this, they either end up kind of taking these tiny little steps, or they start bringing their feet together. And we never want our feet to come parallel, because as you guys know, this is a weak position to throw out of. Make sure you extend your stance and shrink it. Extend, shrink, extend, shrink, extend, shrink. You're always staying one foot in front of the other, and you're getting that nice little bob and weave underway. Now the trick here at the end is gonna be put some punches in between your walking slips. It doesn't need to be every time. And I like to actually change up my rhythm so I don't get too, I wanna to say predictable with what's coming. So I'll just basically start moving forward and I'll go, okay, now. And I'll get back to moving. And I'll just surprise myself. Now, now, now. And I'll just change it up. And again, there's no massive rush. When I do this drill, you might be wondering, oh, how long does he go for? What amount of time does he put in? I would say generally once I set this up, it's three rounds. Three times three minutes, nine minutes of work on this little slipping drill, and that to me is perfect. It'll get your heart rate up. It's a great way to start your training session because it's not overly exerting, and it gets you defensively on point. It gets you thinking about that defense before you start going to other stuff, like maybe wanting to block shots in pad work, or you get to sparring or drilling with a partner. In terms of making this one step further difficult for all those guys out there who are like, okay, I got that down, I'll do the warm up. I'll do the couple little walking and single shots. Then I'll put that together. How do I make it more advanced for the last minute of the nine minutes? If you want something else, then you're gonna start practicing things like I'm moving forward, you're bouncing. You're just getting into your shadow box rhythm. And then I slip and I'm just taking my time. I'm actually shadow boxing, but I just use this rope as a way to sort of combine everything together. So you just basically freestyle on it. Once you start freestyling on this rope and you start getting your head movement down really well with the punches in between, we're getting very close to what you're actually gonna do when you get in and you box or you kickbox. And that's what we want. We want to recreate something that's gonna be very close in drilling to when we actually try to execute in a fight. So that's all I wanna give you guys today. Nine minutes on this, and I think if you give yourself a month or two, you start slow, you start speeding it up, you do a couple times where you get really quick. I think if you take two months, two or three times a week, you're gonna notice your head movement dramatically increase. And that is all. Thank you for joining me today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. As always, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another episode.